thank you very much for being here today. We are delighted to have uh, the Minister of Tourism, Mrs. Olga Kefalogiani, today with us, bearing, bearing great news. And we're gonna be, uh, it's going to be a great testimony about her work and about the prospects of Greek tourism. On uh, the panel, we have, I start from the left, uh, Ambassador Kostadinos Bikas, uh, Secretary General of GNTO, uh, Mr. Panos Livadas, of course, the Minister, Mrs. Olga Kefalogiani, and uh, our great friend, Simon Cadler. Calder. Uh, I would uh, invite the Minister to take the podium, please. Mrs. Olga Kefalogiani. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be in London for a third year in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, 2014 land, uh, landmark year for Greek tourism, not only because international tourist arrivals and tourism receipts achieved a record high, but also because of the significant institutional reforms which have taken place. And for an additional reason. 2014 is the symbolic centennial anniversary for Greek tourism. A hundred years ago, back in 1914, the Greek statesman Eleftherios Venizelos founded the first national tourism service with the task to promote Greek tourism, a pioneering, visionary, and historic decision a century over which Greece has been progressively developing its tourism sector, improving infrastructure, creating tourism products, generating economic growth and revenue in many regions of the country. Moreover, all these years, tourism is a driving force for other sectors of economic and social life of Greece. The fine arts, literature, architecture, and local culture meaningfully contribute to this magical voyage. Important events have taken place during this course. The first travelers in Greece after the Great War, Greece in the interwar period, the foundation of the Greek National Tourism Organization, the nationwide hotel construction program called Xenia, initiated to improve the country's tourism infrastructure in the 1960s and 1970s. And then, the big, big public works, International Athens Cultural Festival, the big cinema productions, coming up to today with 20 million international tourist arrivals and the revival of Greek tourism. A unique history of ongoing contribution to the country and the prosperity of the Greek people. This is why we honor tourism's unique contribution this year in our country. We honor the huge heritage which places Greece among the top destinations in the world, not only thanks to the natural charm, but also thanks to the tradition, Greek hospitality, and the well-established tourism culture. Ladies and gentlemen, tourism in Greece has regained the place it deserves. It's a dynamic sector of the national economy with a significant contribution to the GDP of almost 20%. It reinforces employment by creating thousands of new jobs. It revitalizes and generates income for the Greek regions, increasing revenues and creating robust local economies. But also, other sectors of the economy, like the primary sector, the agricultural sector, are developed along with tourism. All this is not incidental, but an accomplishment with the full support of the Greek government. An accomplishment attributed to the National Strategic Plan for Tourism and the awareness of the fact that tourism can play a crucial role in the recovery of the national economy. We are proud to have made it. We continue keeping the same pace, the same intensity. We move to the restructuring of Greek tourism without neglecting all those elements that made Greece so attractive as a destination. We lay emphasis on upgrading and improving the quality of the tourism services provided. Today, Greek tourism is not just for sea and sun. Greek, Greek tourism is evolving into a multi-layered set of products which aims at fully meeting the expectations of modern, discerning visitors. The foundations are already in place. 
Greek tourism is being revamped through legislative and institutional reforms. It makes the transition from an inspiring past to a dynamic present with a much promising future lying ahead. Reforms which are made and which are still being made in the tourism sector dramatically transform the operational environment and are favorable to developing business and investment opportunities. Let me briefly mention the seven goals for the next years as they are set in the National Strategic Plan for Tourism. First, modernization of infrastructure. Second, enrichment of the tourism offering. Third, increasing spending per capita. Fourth, promoting sustainable development and showcasing new destinations with an emphasis on the conservation of natural and cultural assets. Fifth, boosting employment and strengthening social cohesion. Sixth, supporting entrepreneurship. Seventh, diffusion of tourism surplus to the regions, local communities and other sectors of the economy. Taking into account all of the above mentioned goals and taking into consideration the positive messages we received from London this year, we believe that 2015 is going to be an equally positive and effective year for tourism. It will be yet another year of success, a year of further development and growth for Greek tourism. In this context, I am extremely satisfied to share with you the news that the next travel convention of APTA is being hosted in the region of the Peloponnese in Greece in October 2015 at the Costa Navarino Resort. And uh, I'd like to refer to uh, APTA's chief executive, Mark Tanzer, who said, we are delighted that the Costa Navarino will be hosting the 2015 travel convention, and we are more than confident that this event is going to set new standards for APTA. I have no doubt that delegates to the 2015 travel convention will be enthusiastic ambassadors for the Peloponnese after having visited this very spe special region of Greece. Ladies and gentlemen, Greece is a strong, internationally acknowledged brand. And as is the case with all strong brands, they enrich their communication with their core, timeless components. In 2012, Greece was promoted to the international tourist market with the brand motto, Greece All-Time Classic. A simple and brief phrase which describes the basic feature of Greece. Timeless and style. In a difficult period for our country, we had to show that the brand Greece is beyond any temporary circumstances. Greece is associated with values, strength, and a centuries-old prestige. The last two years were marked by creativity and positive performance. Greek tourism was reborn. So today, we are further developing our communication. This year, we are keeping all the core features and we narrate a story. Greece is a country which brought us heroes, philosophers, wise men and universal scholars. They were inspired by the Greek land, they conceived a vision, they made it come true and gave humanity food for thought. Every Greek destination is the birthplace of an ancient god. Every place in our country hides a myth, a magical story, the energy of which is kept alive until today. Well-known contemporary activities like harvesting, entertainment, sports, learning, arts, are inspired and correspond to a Greek god, a Greek hero, a myth, or a historical event. We have gathered all this material and we present it to the world through our communication channels. It will be mainly diffused through the World Wide Web, our official website, visitgreece.gr, and the social media of the Greek National Tourism Organization, which are particularly dynamic. Our aim is to promote the true values of life, the myths which convey moral lessons from the ancient times up to the present. We want to remind our friends who visit Greece that every corner of our country has its own great history. Every element of Greek nature corresponds to a philosophical approach which has been incorporated into the global wisdom. 
the sea, the mountains, the plains, the Greek villages and the islands of Greece, all have a story to tell and a lesson to offer to every visitor. Our new communication strategy is based on the Greek gods and ancient heroes that we have all read in our childhood and known since our school years. They take us around Greece and explain the uniqueness of the country with all its warm hospitality. In Greece, imagination and reason formed the society of human measure. In Greece, the gods resembled humans in form and had human passions and desires with mind and heart. Country, nature, its products and their works are all of our strength. Everyone is welcome to the land of human measure, of discourse, of beauty and of desire. The land of positive energy, of openness, of authenticity. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all those who have been loyal friends for Greece. All of you who know that Greece is a welcoming land. It's where you feel nice and at home. I would also like to invite you to explore Greece throughout the year and discover the secret Greece, discover the gods and heroes of our country. I'm confident that you will bring back experiences which will change your life to the better. The magic spell of Greece is waiting for you. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to present to you gods, myths, and heroes, a visualized and personalized story about Greece. You will be the first audience to see this film, as it will be released online and on social media directly after World Travel Market. Enjoy. Here I am back in the office after spending the most incredible year of my life in Greece. As a middle-aged writer, I finally had the chance to realize a lifelong dream, to explore Greece for a few months and perhaps figure out why this little land continues to exert such a huge influence on me and on the imagination of almost everyone I know. Now I have a stone in my pocket and a story to tell. Where to begin? Well, as a boy, first I loved dinosaurs and then cowboys, but then abandoned them both for the more enduring passion of Greek mythology. The gods and goddesses, heroes and stories of ancient Greece awoke my slumbering imagination and lured me onto a path of discovery and my own brand of storytelling. I had traveled all over the world for work and play, and I thought that this trip to Greece would be no different. A month of exploring and research, looking for stories and pictures, but I ended up spending almost a year. Although I had read everything I could before coming to Greece, I wasn't prepared for the light. How clear and gentle and soothing it was. The light of Greece opened my eyes, penetrated my pores, expanded my whole being. Why is the light so different in Greece? I don't know, but it is. Everywhere else, the light just is, like your skin, vital but unnoticed. In Greece, it takes on a new dimension. It's luminous, soft, dazzling, 
legendary, tangible, infinite, spiritual. That's when it struck me like an arrow, and I understood what the ancient Greeks felt about Apollo, the god of light. This sensation first hit me with all of its force on the island of Delos, where visitors still whisper in awe as they stroll through Apollo's lion-guarded sanctuary. This unique civilization profoundly shaped who we are and how we live, even today. It celebrated the triumph of reason over the violent and irrational, of democracy over the darkness of tyranny. It taught us to govern ourselves with moderation, to heal ourselves with the use of logic, and to express ourselves and our inner soul through art. It taught us about the rights and responsibilities of the individual, about the value of struggle, and the dignity of being fully human and free. Wherever you go all over the world, in every city and town, every university, museum, library or bookshelf owes something important to Athena, goddess of knowledge and wisdom. It was a Greek idea that knowledge makes us free. And so I set out to explore more of Greece, starting with the kingdom of Poseidon. I had a thousand Aegean islands to explore. Out of the sea, the islands emerged, archipelago of dreams, stepping stones of summer. Rose-colored beaches of breathless beauty, bathed in golden light, the delicate and delightful threshold of land and sea, where Aphrodite, goddess of love, lust, and loving kindness, emerges from the waves secret and marvelous places and islands off the beaten track, unmentioned in guidebooks, unexpected and amazing. Sugar cube villages tumble down mountain slopes and spill into the sea. And when the day is done, the moon and her stars paint the sky in brilliant constellations, named from Greek mythology by ancient sailors navigating their way from island to island across the broad sea. As I traveled through the Greek countryside with its incredible variety, I began to appreciate the kindness and harmony of the land, which, like the Greek light, is never harsh or threatening. Rich fields of wheat express gratitude to Demeter, the olive trees which dot the Greek landscape are the gifts of Athena. It's hard to taste an authentic Greek meal without thanking these goddesses for their gifts and eternal generosity. Locked inside the autumn harvest of grapes lives the spirit of the most restless god of all, Dionysus, god of wine and spontaneous joy. Here, Dionysus is at home, and all are welcome. Summer ends, and life in Greece ripens toward the fullness and transformation of autumn. Birds and animals are on the move, and nature wears new colors as we walk through the forest with Artemis by our side. The call of adventure drew me upward into the thin air and snow. The mountains, how dramatic and beautiful they were in this special light. I thought that I would be disappointed in my quest for my childhood gods and heroes, but everywhere I turned, there they were. Ageless peaks capped with snow still echo with Zeus's thunder. Once upon a time, the father of the gods let loose two eagles, 
who swept over the whole earth and met again here at Delphi, the center of the ancient world. Here, for thousands of years, visitors have journeyed from all over the world to this sacred spot to consult the famous oracle and to experience the tangible divinity of light. In Olympia, Hercules founded the Olympic Games, and even today, the Olympic spirit and eternal flame continues to burn bright. The games and contests of the Olympics celebrated not only the dignity of struggle and the glory of human excellence, but the timelessness of art and beauty as well. All those things men do to celebrate nature and add to its abundance. Traveling through Greece, everywhere you discover ancient theaters that still gather the energy of the earth and sky. At Epidaurus, I felt a stillness so intense that for a fraction of a second I heard the great heart of the world beat. And when a new god came onto the scene, he was also welcomed and accommodated. The old gods took on new names. Byzantine churches and monasteries were built, expressing the Greek people's gratitude for the miracle of life. Every place so unique, so different, so special. And the land's most precious inheritance. Beauty, measure, proportion and human scale show a balance between man and nature and make visible the dimensions of the heart. I was a little wiser now about how to travel and see things with fresh eyes and how to understand things with the senses and not just the mind. Greece had made me free and whole. The world must become small again as the old Greek world was. Small enough to include everybody. Greece has given me this incredible gift that I could now take with me anywhere. The ability to seize the moment and enjoy the fullness of life. That was an amazing video. I hope it's going to be posted on uh, YouTube uh, soon enough. Uh, as uh, Minister Kefalogiannis pointed out, in uh, 2014 we are celebrating 100 years since the establishment of the first tourist office in Greece. To mark the occasion, we thought it important to document a historic landmark during this period. Who better to, to take a look at the life and times of the industry and help us understand the enduring fascination for Greece than global guru of uh, the BBC travel show and travel correspondent for the independent Mr. Simon Calder. Please, Mr. Calder. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, Your Excellency's Minister, uh, Ambassador, and 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honour to be here, to mark 100 years since the official start of tourism in Greece. The Bureau of Foreigners and Exhibitions was founded a century ago this year. And I am going to attempt to get through 100 years of tourism in exactly um, 15 minutes, which, if your math is like mine, works out about 6.7 years per minute. Let's see how we get on, shall we? 1914, of course, tourism in Greece had been going for a lot longer than that. You had Lord Byron, who had been there two, uh, in the uh, early uh, 19th century. You had all the Philhellenes who were going there as part of the Grand Tour. And of course, you had the Olympics. 1896, a great time for Athens. And did you know there was an intercalated games that was held every even-numbered year where there wasn't an official Olympic Games. And the idea was you'd have the Olympics in 1904, um, somewhere else, then back in, in Athens, 1906, and then somewhere else in 1908. Of course, um, world events and war meant that that didn't happen. So let's go. Um, I've not, just to... Um, for the avoidance of doubt, I've not done the whole hundred years from memory, um, but I have been using the very useful library at uh, the GNTO and their fantastic collection of posters. I've also been to the Travel Trade Gazette, which is quite young, at, uh, born in 1953, and Thomas Cook, going even longer than the uh, GNTO, has been a great help as well. And you might think, 1914, a silly year to start a tourist enterprise, but it wasn't because there was lots going on. Um, and if you see Thomas Cook, they had a very good uh, travel magazine called the Traveller's Gazette, and it had a tour of classic Greece, and it would uh, take you to all sorts of interesting places, like Epidavros, which we just saw in that fantastic film. But they described it without a touch of irony as the Tunbridge Wells of Greece. It's true. You can go to the Thomas Cook archive and check that out for yourself. Of course, um, travel wasn't entirely smooth. Um, owing to the uncertainty of the steamer services, passengers are recommended to make inquiries at Cook's Athens office in order to ascertain whether the sailings are actually taking place or not. You were warned. But um, it, it, the same thing applied really to the railways, but these were difficult times. And let's just spin through some very, very bleak years for Greece and for the rest of the world. It was a tough, tough time, but uh, that, gosh, we caught up a bit of, uh, bit of time ourselves there. Um, and let's take 1928, sounds like a good place to start, because you have tourism coming back in Greece. And the Traveller's Gazette of Thomas Cook, this is a, a Greek uh, a tourism poster, absolutely beautiful. Um, Rhodes, a carcasson of the Aegean Sea. I don't know what it was about the Traveller's Gazette, but they seem to want always to compare places in Greece with other places. Um, this uh, talks about the fantastic uh, uh, stronghold of the knights and says, a reminder of a day when might as a general rule was right and Christianity was a very muscular description. Um, by 1929, of course, so there was uh, plenty of uh, people heading over there, mostly by rail, on the wonderful Wagon Lee, and that was how much it cost. Um, so, best possible uh, uh, class, um, only £30. Pounds. Um, and when you got off the boat from Brindisi at Patras, there was an interpreter, which was very handy. Uh, 1929, by the way, um, they still hadn't standardised time, so noon in Athens was 11 uh, sorry, 1025 in Greenwich. And if you, before you could leave Greece, you had to buy permission from the local police, price eight shillings and threepence. There we are. So, uh, some more difficult years in terms of worldwide recession and so on. But the things were still pressing on um, quite, quite happily uh, for the people who were lucky enough to be able to afford to travel. Um, Here's the Cook's Handbook, Winter Sun, 1936-37, and all kinds of uh, great deals. A 15-day tour of Greece would cost you £41, two shillings and sixpence. At the, in the same year, can you believe, the world's first modern airport owned, opened. It wasn't Athens, it was actually Gatwick Airport. Uh, check it out. Um, you could fly from there on Imperial Airways. Note that everything it was included in your fare 
even tips. So try that on Ryanair next time you are traveling with them. Um, again, it's a many, many, many tough years. Uh, Greece, of course, um, suffered enormously in the war. Here's some uh, troops going off to the Albanian front in 1940. And so, by the end of the war, of course, the uh, situation in Greece was very, very tricky economically. The whole country had been uh, effectively on its knees economically. But look, by 1948, some absolutely beautiful posters are being produced to entice foreigners to Greece. The trouble was the financial situation. Since the release of Greek territory from enemy occupation, the monetary system is in a state of confusion says the Thomas Cook Continental Timetable and gives an approximate rate of 25,000 drachmas for one pound. So you could, ladies and gentlemen, become a millionaire for 400 pounds. Anyway, 1949, 1950, uh, things were expanding at a good old rate. Um, we had uh, 1953, quite a milestone. Um, economy class had just been launched the previous year, along with the Comet, which uh, sped things up. And you'd seen uh, foreign tourism to Greece rise by 48% year on year. Travel Trade Gazette was founded. And would you believe, here you have an ad from the very first year. Why is Greece so popular now? Well, pretty much the reasons that the excellent minister was talking about just a few minutes ago. Uh, not much changes, ex especially if you're a travel agent and um, companies are going bust. There we are. Agents do good job aiding stranded travellers. I hasten to add, they were not stranded in Greece. They were stranded in France where there was a strike. Whatever next. Um, so let's uh, press on. Of course, none of us had actually been born in any of these years, which is um, good news for us. 1957, Magic Mykonos, um, a beautiful uh, chapter in a lovely book uh, by Monica Krippner. Um, she was an Australian writer who travelled through uh, the Peloponnese and other parts of uh, Athens to the islands and so on. Um, and she says that life in those days was slightly different. Should a young woman speak to a youth in the street, she is considered engaged to him, or, if she is not, is branded as something only a little better than a prostitute. Hmm. Anyway, she was asked all kinds of interesting questions during her research. Do women in England drive cars? Was I a Protestant? And do Protestants believe in Jesus Christ? Um, and in the same year, there was another great book, Eternal Greece, there we are, um, which was um, touched on an enduring controversy. I, uh, this is Rex Warner writing, I can never see the Elgin marbles in the British Museum without wishing that a generous or even an enlightened government would take steps to restore them to their proper place. There we are. Um, whatever next. 1960, oh, this was exciting. Um, so quite a lot of things were happening here. Um, some uh, 1960s posters, which were lovely. And um, on the beautiful island of Idra, Leonard Cohen buys a house. And his great work, Songs from a Room, of which I have a copy, younger members of the audience, this is called a record, an LP, <laughs> an album. Um, and that is the room in which the songs were written, which is on the lovely island of Idra. There we are. You can come round to my house and listen to it on my record player, my gramophone. There we are. Very good. OK, where are we next? My goodness me. The 60s, things were hotting up. Look, um, hotting up so quickly that we overtook ourselves. The first GNTO office outside Greece was opened in London. Hooray! You could telegram it at uh, Greg door. You could send a telex to it. For some reason, they left the uh, URL for the website off. I wonder why. Um, here we are, got the Athens Festival. But of course, um, package tourism was hotting up, which was very, very good, partly because in 1964, Zorba the Greek was released. Um, we had uh, cruises, and we also had tobacco tourism, a, a little known and short-lived um, uh, time when you were actually enticed to uh, come to Greece and smoke Papastratos. Anybody smoked a Papastratos? They're great. The very last cigarette I smoked in 1990 was a Papastratos. I greatly enjoyed it. I remember it still. Okay, so 1967, tricky old year in terms of um, democracy in the home of democracy, of course, but they were still producing great uh, um, 
posters and Thomas Cook was still producing great holidays to some quite interesting places where I don't think they're selling holidays this year but they were of course selling them to uh, uh, Greece which, which was um, very good news um, you had only 50 pounds to spend on your holiday due to um, operational difficulties in the Stirling area and my goodness me you would be flying off on BEA and a long uncomfortable flight it was but wait till 1968 here you have Britannia bringing in 737s and you could go from Luton to Athens if you booked a holiday with Universal Sky Tours, Riviera Holidays and Gay Tours a very good company um, anticipating of course the time when uh, Greece would become a great LGBT destination very good. Let's see where we are now. Oh, more great posters, 1970. Um, and you had the BP Touring Guide to Europe, uh, which um, told you, among other useful things, uh, that you should avoid the Retsina. It didn't say whether or not you were driving. Very odd. Um, spinning through the 70s at a fair old rate. 1976 saw um, this ad from Cara Georgius line. It was also uh, the, uh, sorry, 1975, do forgive me, um, the dictatorship had ended, uh, democracy had been restored, and I was ready to go to Greece for the first time. Sadly not on Cara Georgius line. I went on a slightly more uncomfortable ferry, um, hitchhiked through Italy, travelled over from Brindisi. Had I been a better traveller, I would have gone with Thomas Cook. Um, there we had the beautiful um, uh, holidays. Can you believe next year, you, I bet, will be able to take a two-centre holiday in Athens and Sunion for £178. And that is in 40 years. I'm going to try it personally. Uh, you can also go to Rhodes and Crete. Lucky you. And Olympic Airlines introduced their own brand, All Sun. 1976, this very useful book uh, uh, came out. Um, you were told uh, that Greece was still quite traditional. Tuesdays, it said, were unlucky. Hmm. Uh, what's, it's Monday, yeah, so that's all right. But if you were unlucky with your money, um, you were told you can sell your blood at 140 drachmas a pint at the Blood Transfusion Centre in Athens or the Red Cross Clinic on the seafront in Thessaloniki. And the customs limit, just so you know, 200 cigarettes, 50 cigars, five box boxes of matches, and two packs of playing cards. No more than that, please. Um, we also had great tourism uh, opportunities and they opened up Parnassus to the uh, overseas market for the first time as well. Um, so moving very swiftly on, uh, we had in 1980, Europe, a manual for hitchhikers, was um, uh, telling people that they should, oh, excuse me, um, Greece is one of the most beautiful countries on earth to get stranded for a few hours. Um, you will find yourself being treated as a status symbol or at least a conversation piece. A driver will pick you up, then stop at every wayside cafe and even take long and bumpy detours to visit friends simply in order to show you off. 1981. Uh, Greece joined the European Union, which is very good news, eased entry restrictions, which, is wanted, which was very, very good, because if you wanted to follow in James Bond's uh, footsteps, for your eyes only, you could go to the monasteries of Meteora, and it was a very good time. Uh, 1982, a guidebook dynasty was founded, the Rough Guides. Club 1830 was founded. Avis got their branding in yet another shot. And can you believe the Greek tourism yearbook had topless tourism in, the, uh, in, in its pages. So this was all about um, life as Dionysus would enjoy it. So, ah, oh, right. Then, anybody remember the old way of getting to Greece on the cheap without actually hitchhiking? You had to have a tent. You had to rent your tent back to the tour operator who would then sell you a charter ticket which meant that you could dodge all the restrictions well this wasn't very popular at the time and so the uh, greek government tried to uh, stamp it out but a bit of a clue here we can sell cheaper by cutting out the retailer we'll get to that shortly would you believe a company called sunville run by noel josephides was complaining about some of the low-cost tour offers on uh, on offer. Now that was in uh, what, 1983, but um, there's been the same announcement every year since then. I've checked. <laughs> there we are. Uh, is Noel here? Uh, there we are. Um, right. 
crikey, through the 80s, times were going very, very well indeed. Um, the uh, beautiful, beautiful productions from the uh, Greek tourist office, ice cream available today, all very nice. It looked absolutely lovely. Crikey, where were we all in these days? In these days indeed. Um, 1992, a leading economist had said, you cannot possibly have a single currency within Europe. This is John Naisbitt. I don't know where he is now, but I wouldn't take too much notice of his advice. There we are. Um, Kefalonia, of course, 1994, featured in um, uh, Captain Corelli's Mandolin. And then 1997 was interesting. Capital of Culture Year, a Greek invention, of course, in Thessaloniki. And somebody called Stelios Hajiyanu starts, well, he's already started an airline called EasyJet, and he started flying to Athens from Luton with the slogan, cut out the travel agents, which made him not very popular with travel agents, very popular with budget travelers. Crikey, 15 years to go. Um, that's about two minutes, I think, in, in um, our time. Uh, right, 2004 was the great year to be Greek. In July, Greece beat Portugal in the opening game of the Euro Championships. It then, in the final of the Euro Championships, beat Portugal. Fantastic news. And then a month later, of course, it hosted the Olympics in Athens. What a great year to be Greek. And other things were happening. Seaplane links um, in the Ionian Islands were opening up. Now, you had the Eurovision Song Contest, for instance, being hosted. You had uh, Mamma Mia being filmed. And you had some various interesting um, economic events happening in Greece. But by 2013, visitor numbers had reached 18 million. And whew, here we are, 2014, uh, 15 minutes on. Uh, visitor numbers are actually now exactly 60 times they, what they were in 1914, 20 million uh, people a year, plus 2 million cruise passengers. British Airways, of course, this year has started non-stop flights from Gatwick to Mykonos and Santorini. Announced next year it's going to be going to Corfu, uh, Kos, Rhodes and Iraklion. And for the monumental 12th edition of uh, the Lonely Planet Guide to Greece, uh, there were eight authors researching it, 768 uh, pages, and it was a marvellous piece of work. Here we are, why I love Greece. Experience endless miles of aquamarine coastline, sun-beached, ancient ruins, strong feta and stronger ouzo. So some things seem pretty uh, uh, enduring indeed, and would you believe only yesterday, in the Independent on Sunday, we had a centre spread all about the marvellous heritage of Greece. So, thank you so much for listening to me. I'm looking forward to being here in a hundred years' time to look back at a second <laughs> century of Greek tourism. Meanwhile, enjoy the rest of the hour. Thank you. Simon, that was amazing. I learned a million things. Thank you very much. And again, YouTube it, please. Uh, I would like to invite uh, the Secretary General of uh, the Greek National Tourist Organization, Mr. Panos Livadas. She's going to be speaking to us with an overview of uh, Greek tourism and uh, the latest developments. He's uh, the guy who knows it all. I have to say that not only because he was my former boss, but he indeed is the guy to, to listen to. Thanks, George. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I feel the need to apologize because after the speech of the minister and then this breathtaking video and this amazing notes and inspiring notes by Simon, whom we thank very much, then you have to bear with me for a few minutes. I promise I'm not going to take, at least I promise I'm not going to take too much of your time. So, Your Excellency Minister of Tourism, Your Excellency Mr. Ambassador of Greece to the, to the United Kingdom, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am more than happy to be standing here among you today in Excel. For us, the Greek, you know, the Greek National Tourism Organization, the world travel market is the place where it all happens. The heart of tourism beats here. All the sector developments are showcased here. All the future travel trends start here. That's why we have always been dedicated supporter of the world travel market since their very first step in 1980 and for 35 years since. 
It constitutes for us a paramount opportunity to showcase Greece's unique brand, to present all the authentic Greek experiences and destinations to the world, while our co-exhibitors are here to share and introduce new services, new products. Ladies and gentlemen, I imagine you have already heard the news. 2014 has, without any doubt, been a year to remember. 2014 has been a year of new all-time records for Greece. Let me share just a few numbers. More than 20 million arrivals in 2014, or exceeding 22 million if we include cruise ship passengers, 14 billion euros of revenues, that's about 11 billion UK pounds, 700,000 jobs, people work directly or indirectly in the tourist sector, while tourism today stands for approximately 20% of the country's GDP. I believe you will agree that these are some impressive figures indeed. On top of that, 2013 was a record year, so this leaves us with two back-to-back -back record years, and this is not something that happened by chance. This is the result of new competitive policies and hard work. Allow me to mention just three defining parameters that led to this success. First, the political stability of the past two years, which laid the necessary foundation for us to unfold policies and initiatives to meet these numbers. Second, the reformist legislative and other initiatives of Minister of Tourism Olga Kefalogiani that more than radically cut down red tape and facilitated ongoing and new investments. Quoting our Prime Minister Samaras, the Greek government nowadays welcomes investors not with red tape but with red carpet. And third, the Greek National Tourism Organization's tourist strategic shift in its communications policy towards the web, the online providers, and the social media. From day one, we worked under the, convi under the conviction that today, the web, more than ever in the past, is where potential visitors from every corner of the world <coughs> I apologize for that from every corner of, the, oh, corner of the world go to dream and to learn and to compare, even to decide where the next vacation or visit will be. And that's where the great battles of the competitions of the competition are fought. And of course, we don't stop there. We explore every possibility. We look into every idea and we are doing everything humanly possible to be there at the frontier of every development that would offer added value to our objectives. To borrow examples, only for the last couple of weeks we presented a new cooperation with Samsung, the Visit Greece application for their web TV platform, while we organized, along with the municipality of Athens, TBEX the global conference for travel bloggers. Only in the first few days, 22 million impressions about the Greek touristic products were broadcasted to the world, and of course, we're still counting. Dear friends, Greece is a hospitable and safe destination, a home away from home for approximately 22 million people from around the globe. The UK market has played a leading role in this success. In the year to August, Greece saw a 16% increase of arrivals from the United Kingdom and a staggering 20% increase of travel revenues. The UK market has always been one of the most important markets for us since, apart from being a trendsetter, it's one of the most loyal ones. Our friends from the UK love Greece, keep coming back to explore more, to experience the authentic Greek lifestyle, to indulge themselves into the never-ending Greek beauty. We're working very closely with all our UK partners in order to be able to, to provide an even more alluring tur touristic product and to further differentiate it. Greece is so much more than the sun and the sea, its gastronomy, its culture, its nature, its luxury. I believe that most of all, it is the authentic experiences we have to offer and the fact that whatever we do for our visitor, we do it from our hearts. We are gazing towards the future with confidence, targeting niche markets, further extend the season while at the same time securing high quality services are some of the top, priority, top priorities for us. Greece is a unique brand 
that keeps ameliorating its tourism product. We are the Greek National and Tourism Organization that has always been the guardian of Greek tourism. We look at you as our partners and we are eager to work with you even closer. Ladies and gentlemen, people say that tourism transcends its role as a form of recreation. It becomes an indicator of the diplomatic relations between countries or a measure of cultural affinities between nations. On certain occasions, one can say that it can even become a vote of confidence. We believe that Greece's two last back-to-back -back record years were a vote of confidence for our country. It came out loud, and because of the crisis and the difficulties of the last five years, it could not have come at a better moment. I wish to take the opportunity and thank you from our hearts for this vote of confidence. Thank you so much.